Hi, my name's Jeff, and I wanted to share one of my favourite QPR memories with you all. I've been a Rangers fan for a little over 50 years. I can still remember sitting on my dad's lap and watching what must have been the big match on TV, and he tells me I was about four, and he told me that he was a QPR fan, and like all good lads, I followed my dad, and he's been with me ever since. I've got five kids of my own now, two boys who, one's a QPR fan for about 25 years, and the other I'm still working on, um, and two of my girls are big fans too. Forgive the shirt, I'm living in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales, Australia these days, and waiting for delivery of the new ones. So to my story. 22nd of March 1975, I was nine years old and my dad had somehow arranged for a couple of tickets for us to go and see QPR away to Birmingham. I think it was the equivalent of what these days we'd call a corporate hospitality and I remember we caught the train from Euston and we went up to Coventry and he met some business colleagues or associates and we all went off to lunch. As a nine-year-old, I was a little bit shy and trying my best to join in all the banter, but being somewhat ignored. Anyway, about halfway through the lunch, I decided that after a few glasses of lemonade, it was time to go to the little boys' room. <laughs> and in the little boys' room, there was something for big boys that I didn't realise. There was a vending machine on the wall. And uh, having a little bit of change in my pocket, <laughs> thinking it was chewing gum, I decided to buy myself a packet. So I did what I'd gone to the bathroom for, washed my hands, went back to the dinner table, joined my dad and his colleagues. There was about seven or eight of them, I think, from memory. And still desperate to join in the conversation, I pulled out my purchase and showed dad and the rest of the table or announced that I'd found a new brand of chewing gum, to which my dad must have been absolutely horrified, bless him, and said, I remember him saying, I'll look after that, son. And it was only years later that I realised what I'd actually done. And so we went on to the game. It was the year before the great season and a lot of the great players were at the club at the time. Jerry Francis and Stan Bowles, Don Gibbons, Dave Thomas and more. Anyway, we got off to a great start. I've got a feeling it was Dave Thomas that put us in front. Um, but just a fantastic occasion at St Andrews. I, I remember it being packed and a, an incredible atmosphere. What well, I didn't realise that I was probably one of only two QPR fans in the place with my dad. Anyway, we ended up getting beaten 4-1, but it had been a great day and I'd done my best to join in the conversation with the grown-ups. Anyway, we drove back to Coventry, ready to catch the train. Dad said his goodbyes as the train came in and I was just about to board it. And my dad hesitated and said, no, no, we'll, we'll go in this carriage over here, son. Well, I was a bit reluctant and obviously it had been a bit of a difficult day for a shy boy. And the one that I was going to get into was empty. And his dad insisted that we went in the other carriage. So we got on and I looked down the carriage and I swore blind that Dave Sexton was looking back at me. And then I realised that he was sitting next to Jerry Francis and Phil Parks and Stan Bowles and all the rest of them. And it was it was just an amazing, whether my dad had seen them on there or what, I'd, I'll, I'll never know. But it was an amazing experience for me. And I took my programme round, everybody signed it, which I was incredibly grateful for. And it's something that I've still got today. Um, it's still packed up actually since my move to Australia 10 years ago, but I do have it. So a wonderful memory, um, probably made all the more memorable for what I now know happened at lunch as well. And, and, and my dad being the, the straightest man that I ever knew would have been absolutely mortified. But um, certainly when I pull the program out of the packing case, eventually it will take pride of place in the study that I have in my house here. So that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it brought a smile or two. And... Um, Come on, you ask.